Yeah, I said quiet. All right, we were started talking about the three unit generator regulator yesterday. But we'll do it all again today. And you're like, thankfully. <laughs> all right, so the three unit regulator that works with generators has to control three things. And what are those three things? Voltage, 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 voltage current, current, and reverse current relay. Okay, so it's, it has to control voltage because why? Voltage needs to be constant. It's got to be set for the system. All right, current. Why do we have to adjust current? It can't, go above the can't go above the rated generator current. It's not like you're going to put too much current out to the airplane. I mean, if you need it, it's, it wants it. Um, obviously, when, you know, if you have a 20 amp alternator, it just doesn't put 20 amps into the airplane all the time. Well, what are we going to do with it? Um, every time we turn something on, it blows up. That's no, because of 20 amps. Uh, so current limiter is there to protect the generator. Voltage regulator is there to protect the aircraft. And the reverse current cutout relay is there to protect, well, I guess, the battery and the generator because those to be in conflict. So remember, the reverse current cutout relay stops current from going from the battery into the generator, which I joke around. I say, well, it makes it into a little motor. It gives a little more horsepower. But, you know, in uh, all seriousness there, it will drain the battery and create some problems. So we don't want that. So all three things have to work out. And wherever you see the thin wire, we can. you should know that that is something that is in parallel. Wherever you see the fat wire right there, not to wire shame you, but uh, that is in series. So if we were to take a, were to take a look, we are going to take a look at it. Let me see, we'll use a highlighter so I can highlight. All right, so we are going to look at what happens here. So we have power coming out of the armature, going to the A plus of the generator. A plus of the generator is what? Armature positive. Power, power out. out, okay? Yeah. So if we follow that power out, we're going to go down this fat wire all the way through there, and we're going to come through, well, the current limiter. Now we're going to get into the reverse current cutout, and we're going to come to a contact point that is currently open. So how much current is flowing through that wire right now? I'm gonna go none, because it's an open. So we have nothing, so nothing is flowing through it right now. And that's an important point to note, because the points are open, open and these are normally open. So these points right here are normally closed in the voltage regulator because it's it, right now, if it's off, then these would be pretty much saying, hey, I don't have the voltage I want, so give me more power. These would be closed because they're saying, hey, amperage is fine. They don't, as I, I watched the video, they don't go to work until we get to the limit of the current. So if this is a 20 amp generator, these things don't show up for work until we get to 20 amps. All right, and this right here is asking, it's already at work, it's asking for more voltage. So these things are off. These are normally open, so that's the normal position. So if I turn on the battery master and get ready to go, but the engine's not running, this is pretty much what we're gonna see right here. All right, but then we start up. Should I go green? We start up the engine, click on the, master, or click on the uh, generator switch, and the armature starts to spin. And what are we going to get with the armature spinning? How much, well, how much voltage do we have through the field? Like two volts. Uh, through the field? And what, what's put back into it? Yeah. Well, if we, start was, was residual? if we start at the beginning, we have residual. Residual is what? In the field wires or the field core? The field core. 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 The core has some residual magnetism. So we'll say there's nothing going through the wire. So the armature starts to spin. It spins inside of the residual magnetism left from the field, and it can produce about two volts. Two volts. Well, the two volts are going to come up through this way, through this way, down here, into this voltage coil. Let's see. But these are normally closed. closed. So the voltage coil really doesn't have a whole lot of effect here because it's only at two volts. So it's going to go through the normally closed breaker points and let me see and come through here through the normally closed current limiter 
and I found a way to get to the field coils with no resistance, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's going to happen. So we're going to get two volts is going to come through here. That two volts is going to energize this coil, which is going to give it a few more volts. A few more volts is going to go around. And it's going to bootstrap itself. There's a word we have to start we're using. Bootstrap itself until this thing is putting out more voltage. Let's say 14 volts. So when it puts out 14, oh, wait a minute, I got to back up a little bit. <clears throat> so as soon as it starts putting out 14 volts, now let's go back and take a look. This is going to start doing what? Opening. Opening. Okay, so now that right there is going to vibrate. Holding it at 14 volts. And let's take a look at what's happening over at our current coil. <clears throat> is it too messy with all that drawing on there? It looks like Christmas, I love it. All right, well, we'll go with gold now. All right, so let me see. We'll go back to, I like the highlighter. All right, so <clears throat> things happen all, the, all of a sudden, but we do have a little bit of a path that was going through here that I didn't point out. Go into ground. That was always there. And so what happens is that's a voltage coil, sensing voltage. And when that voltage coil was back there at two volts, it did nothing. It wasn't strong enough to do anything. Well, when it got to above battery voltage, this right here is strong enough to that color's not going to work to close the points. Uh, to close these points. So now these points closed because this voltage coil was strong enough. Voltage coil closes points. We'll say at well, just 14 volts above battery voltage. So it's going to close the points. It's just strong enough to close the points. Now, as soon as those points started to close, or did close, then, nope. There. Ah, that was not the one I wanted. I want the highlighter. Sorry. Control I don't think it'll work. Let me see. No. Control Y. No. Control T. You just make it up numbers. <laughs> All right. So we had this going through here. Went up to this point. The voltage in this coil down here was enough to close the points, and that started flowing through to the aircraft load. When it did that, this coil right up here is now assisting the voltage coil. Follow that? Because it's a lot going on. So the voltage coil, when it's powered up, it pulled the points down. And now when current is flowing this way, current is flowing this way, then this helps pull down. So these points are good and closed. You have two coils closing it. Everybody follow so far? All right. And then we'll go back to this and we'll say, because this went through here. And there's my path to ground. So that's what's going there. So that coil's going. And then we know what's going on with the voltage regulator, right? These points are doing what while it's running? Vibrating. Vibrate. Vibrate. And these points, unless we're at the generator yes. output, they are? Staying closed. They're closed. closed. All right. And this one is what? Open, closed, or vibrating? Open. Or closed, sorry. Right now it's closed. It's closed. Times two, because why times two? Both coils, are helping Both coils are pulling it down. So this is running all fine and well, and then we pull the power back. Pull the power back and the generator goes below its coming in speed. So what happens to the generator now? Uh, it's not creating more voltage in the battery. So, so now the battery has, sorry I interrupted you, battery has more voltage? Yeah. So the battery has more voltage, so, but this is closed, and so the current starts going this way. And now we have the current going backwards through this coil. So what does that do? It causes the, the, it causes the, it reverses the polarity of the magnet, and now it pushes up. And it is stronger than the voltage coil, which would still have some voltage going through it, trying to pull it down a little bit. But this one is much stronger up here, and so because it reversed, it pops it open. So that'll start vibrating? Nope, it just opens. It stays open no matter what. It never vibrates. It's either open or it's closed. You wouldn't okay. want the voltage from the battery. I guess it back. could vibrate if you're right there at battery voltage. It's good as bad. It's good as bad. It's good as bad. You know, just kind of 
but that would be very difficult to do. So when the current from the battery does go backwards through the circuit towards the generator, because it does for a very brief moment in time, when it does that, it reverses the polarity of this electromagnet, pushes the points open, and everything dies. So there. So now that stops, sort of. I mean, it's going to come up through here and down this way, but then it's going to stop right there. It's not going to go any further because it opened back up. But meanwhile, we still have a little bit of voltage here. And what's that going to do? It's not going to do much until we get to what voltage? 14. 14. I add some power to the aircraft. Right, and the engine starts spinning faster, so the generator starts spinning faster. So now the generator comes up and it hits, let's say, 13.6 volts. What does this do? So it brings the points down, and then the, the current uh, current here goes out to the load, and that now draws those points down solid and tight, and it's off and running again. So that's, that's all it does. What's, what's the purpose of having a second coil, a voltage coil? Why couldn't the current coil just be stronger? Good question. Nobody really knows that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, so think about it. This is technically not there because it's open. 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 So even though I drew it coming to this point right here, it's really not there. It's open, so there's no current. So nothing is there is no current. So once that voltage gets high enough to pull that, um, pull that breaker point closed, then, it, then, it'll, then, the, current, then the current coil will actually... Yeah, so technically the current's going to do this. It's going to come down through this coil uh, and come to that point right there and then go this way. And that's the only place you really have any current flowing. And I probably should have just drawn it like that, drew it like that, not drove it. <laughs> so the current coil and the reverse current relay is there more for the battery current than it is for the output current. That's, I mean, trying to figure out your question. So that sounds, that sounds like the only reason it's there. So, yeah. so the, the current coil isn't there to close the points. No. It's there to force the points open when the battery is coming back in. Yes. So we could look at it that way. The current coil is only there so that the points will open when the current comes in backwards. But it does do two things. When it is flowing out to the load, it assists and yeah, locks down those points. That just immediately doubles your power. Doubles the power. And so as soon as this coil gets to 14 volts, why then this is gonna close, and then it's gonna run through here and go that way. And then as soon as it reverses and comes back the other way, then it's going to reverse the power. And it's kind of hard to draw this. When it starts coming backwards, then this coil right here will have a reverse polarity and push these open, killing off. Is that, and is that, that. Pretty, pretty instant, like, like right away, or is it? Yeah, I would think so. Okay. I mean, electrons move at the speed of light, so. Those glasses, I, yeah. <laughs> I actually have seen them moving. Those glasses What he hasn't told you, those are special glasses that allow you to look at the sun during the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should try them. <laughs> All right, everybody, follow me so far. Right. Let's take a look at the current coil put it all together. I think you pretty much probably could figure it out on your own at this point. Uh, let's see, highlighter. We got blue. Blue is fine. All right, so we've got power coming out of here, and it's going off and doing what we just showed. Well, we're going to cut through here. How much current is flowing through the coil right now when the points over here, the re a reverse current cutout, is open? Nothing. nothing, nothing. Ah, a little, little. little tiny bit going through here as evidenced by the dotted line. All right. So that's not a lot of current going through there. All right. And then, colors. 
Here we got the voltage coil. And as we've already shown that it has I miss it down, voltage coil. I'm sorry, that's going this way and off to ground because that's our sensing loop right there. And then pick another color, green. All right, so here's our actually going to the coils, field coils. So it gets to here, it's got two ways to go. It can either go through the closed points or it could have went around this way, right? Mm -hmm. Through the resistor. So when it ex when the voltage starts to get exceeded, so uh, voltage, you know, we add more power to the aircraft and, and voltage wants to start climbing, well, we don't want it to climb, so what happens? The points are going to open or spend more time open than they are closed because they vibrate somewhere between 50 and what, 200 times a second or some crazy thing. All right, so when they're open, it's going to go through the resistor, which is going to reduce the current to the field. When they are closed, it's going to give a direct path. But if we're getting near or at voltage, the, uh, the current limit of the generator, let's say it's a 20 amp um, generator and we're at, you know, 19.8, 20, then what happens here? Okay. Well, the current coil right through here is going to be strong enough to start vibrating or, well, if we do it very slowly, it will open the contacts and which will, allow, which will force the only way through back around to the field was through that resistor this resistor right here through this resistor which will do what to the field current lower it. lower it and when it does that then the magnetism here will decrease, decrease allowing the points to close. close and then it will bypass the resistor go around which increases the field strength which if nothing else has changed then that is going to cause the current to go back up to its maximum which will cause these to start vibrating follow mm -hmm. all right now i don't know i mean we could kind of guess what's happening here with with these at the same time and it would just depend on what the voltage is doing if these are vibrating at such a rate that it's causing the voltage over here to drop below the set limit then these are just going to close and they would pretty much say, oh, wait a minute, you know, this is vibrating so much that, I, I, you know, the voltage over here is now at 12, 12, 8, you know, 13. It's not enough. So these would be closed and this would be vibrating. But that's, this scenario is only going to happen when you are hitting the limit of the uh, generator and these start working, but, which is, I would think, not going to be all the time or often. All right, we have these little... So that's a spring. So the spring is oops, causing these to be normally open or closed. closed. Another spring here that's normally closed. closed. Another one here that makes them open. open. All right. These are thumb screws on here. What are those little thumb screws for? Mechanics, Mechanics to screw with. So if somebody came in and said, hey, I got a problem. You know, my, my voltmeter is in the aircraft. It's, it's always showing like, you know, mm -hmm. 12 and a half, 13 volts. I'd like a little more voltage out of it, please. What do we do? Just change the tension of the spring. Um, I don't know when you would actually have a scenario to do that. Yeah, I was flying around the other day and uh, it's a you know, 35 amp generator and I noticed I was putting out 40 amps. Well, first of all, why were you doing that? Um, but that would be that adjustment or you'd have to read the manual and, and set it up to make sure that this one is opening at the right time. I don't even know how somebody would notice that wasn't working right. I have to think that one through. But typically, you know, we only adjust this one here just because of what pilot reports and such. Do those things come out of adjustment or something like that? They, they like vibrate loose or something? I've never experienced that, but I could see You've where it could. You've never done it before? Uh, I've bumped voltage up a little bit, so I guess so, yeah. It would, yeah, so but not all of these have these tensions, these adjustments. So. Are there like lock nuts on there or something like that to keep them from? No, the spring usually does it. Okay, they're probably less of like a spring, more like a compliant mechanism where it's like snap here, snap here. 
Yeah. Or a lot of times you just bend the tab. Yeah. They're like. So we just um, replace it if it doesn't yeah. work. So on those ones that we have, or that, at least the ones that the one I saw, there wasn't that thumb screw. Would you bend the tab or would you play it? How would you do that? Would you just it'd be kind of a guess and check? It seems like it'd be really fine news. Oh, it is. And I'll do it with you when you can just run it. You can just barely, barely, I mean, you can take the weight of a pencil oh. and set it on there, and it'll change the voltage by at least a couple of volts. Oh, so you can probably do it on the test stand, huh? Yeah, I would think so. Because it's really not a lot of fun to do it this far from a moving prop. <laughs> I was thinking off the, off the airplane. Ah, these things sit, if you're going to be, a lot of this stuff, okay, so you have to adjust something like this. Yeah, you know, the good old boy club, just pull the cowling off, start it up and get in there and, you know, and you got your, your voltmeter and you're just kind of doing what you think, you know, or half the time people are just looking at the ship's gauge if it's got a voltmeter. How's that look? You know, but that's not the way to do things. You got to pull the manual out. You can't, because what are you going to do? Say I adjusted the voltage regulator in accordance with YouTube, you know, or, or my lecture notes or, so you got to have a manual. And if you don't have a manual that tells you how to do something, then don't do it. All right. I got in trouble for doing something like that once. No. What? Huh? Never memorize a manual. No, I, I've told you guys that story. About the rocker arms? No. Uh, yeah, it's whatever, and then you're like, well, see how fast you can find in the manual. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're better off doing that. Um, yeah, well, I guess it fits with the story, but... Uh, it's more of an engine thing. It was our shop was a, rep was a repair station doing engine overhauls. I've been doing them since World War Two. I mean, it, you know, there was a, quite a legacy of doing it, and and we had bought this equipment and hired this guy who came with the equipment from a you know a very I don't know, I'll throw out names well very premier shop who had closed down. We bought all their equipment and you know and this guy was running the whole the whole machine shop and then I got to go in the machine shop so he trained me how to do it and we were refacing rocker arms. And uh, which makes perfect sense. I mean, and, and I even perfected this to where I modified the machines who had custom fit rocker arms and, you know, where everybody else was having all this warranty problems with valves. Like our cylinders never had valve problems. I mean, I, you know, just break my arm, pat myself on the back till one day the FA called and goes, hey, um, question for you. You guys uh, refacing rocker arms? <laughs> Hell yeah, we are. <laughs> he said, uh, and what manual do you use to do that? Overall manual, I'm sure. Well, yeah, could you tell me what page? Well, I'll get back to you. And I went through every overhaul manual I had, and not a single one of them said we could do that. Just didn't, didn't say you couldn't. Just didn't say you could. I'm like, well, God, I've been doing it this shop, the norms, doing it this shop for, you know, 50 years. So I started calling other shops because, you know, it's, it's a community, you know, and uh, call them, hey, you guys reface rocker arms because, you know, I buy them from you when I'm out and stuff. Yo, absolutely reface rocker arms. Well, what authority do you do that under? It's in the manual, man. Try reading it sometime. Yeah, maybe you could tell me what page that's on. <laughs> I'll get right back to you. And then they call up. You just hear the panic in their voice. Um, yeah, it's actually not in the manual. I know. I just found that out. <laughs> and guess who's asking me for the page number? And they're like, holy crap. You know? And so it started this chain reaction through all these shops. Nobody knew. Until I called this one shop that, um, was, they're out of business now, ECI, they sold out to Continental Motors. So when you're buying uh, parts now, like Lycoming parts that say Continental on them, it's ECI stuff. So I was buying a lot of stuff, knew a lot of work with ECI in their machine shop. And so I called them up and I'm like, hey, um, I got a problem. We're refacing rocker arms. It's like, yeah, you know you're not supposed to do that. It's not in the manual. I'm like, okay, I got the right guy on the phone. I said, yes, I just found that out. But you guys do it. And he says, yeah, we have an op spec to do it. And the data, can I have that, please? Sure. I'll fax it right over, because that's how long ago it was. <laughs> so, so they faxed me all the data, and then I had to put together an op spec. I mean, this is back in the days where, you know, they just invented digital cameras, and I had, it was hilarious. So I had to, you know, have photos printed at the photo mat and put them in and tape them down and run it through a copier. Anyway, I made this op spec with all the data, and I walked in the FA and goes, this is how we do it? And he's like, all right, <laughs> approved. <laughs> but uh, let's don't let that again happen again. Yeah, well, Go, you should have just brought your own manual. Huh? You should have just brought your own manual that said you could do it. I did. That's what I said. That's the story. Uh, I wrote my well, own manual like based it. upon their tech data. So now that I take pictures and I had to write the whole thing, and this is how you do it, and showed how we would do it with our equipment. I had to buy a hardness tester 
and uh, comparator blocks for surface roughness gauges and I had all this stuff and then I wrote the manual, took pictures how to do it and then I took it to the FAA and uh, said, okay, this is how we do it. And they said, all right, I'll approve that. And you fine. sold all the manuals for like 80 bucks a pop. Right? It's no good. You just have to go to the FAA and get it approved because oh, <laughs> then it became part of our op spec for the repair station. So they tell you that story to say, yeah, there's a screw right there and there and there, but if you don't have data that tells you what to do and how to do it and what the parameters are, I wouldn't do it because I've learned the hard way that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should because you adjust something like that and then what happens is the person who you were working with suddenly has an, an, a radio failure completely unrelated to what you just did. They will say, hey, you just broke my radio. And guess what a nice Garmin 750 series radio costs these days. Eight grand. Huh? Eight grand. Double it. Double. And then double that number. So I think installed, you're looking at well over 20,000. So that goes out and he says, it's because you adjusted that screw. No, it isn't. Well, you know what they do? They walk into the FAA and they say, that guy is doing work on planes without manuals. And they call you up and say, are you doing work? Did you adjust this? Well, what's your data? Which is how I got caught. Because some, we did something for somebody and they didn't like that thing. And what we had done was not a problem, but they didn't like it. They wanted something new. And so they took the rocker arms to the FA and said, look what they did. It was a setup. The whole thing was a setup from the get-go. Oh, so it was a fictitious litigator who was known for doing that stuff. Uh, we didn't know it at the time. Oh, what's the uh, uh, No, they call it fictitious. There's somebody who just goes around and, and like, this uh, person's no longer with us. Um, <laughs> I guess he, 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 once we did this and we found out from all the other shops, oh, that guy. Oh, yeah. You know, um, we had a, a parts store in town who just sold him out of the an unsealed thing from Continental out of a box. He like ordered it, they ordered it. Here it is, it's still in the box, it's sealed, he never touched it. He sued them over that part because some weird thing about the part. He's like, we just sold it to you. Was Talk it like to uh, someone who goes around like Yes. ADA? Yes, that's what that. All right, that was off topic, but yet relevant, so. Okay, so that is how that works. Do you understand, I hope? Now, I could write like an hour's worth of notes on that. Yes? Yeah, no, I think we'll be okay. Really? You guys are like spoiled, man. You actually want me to do that? Yeah, they can just rewatch the video. Like an animation sent to my email. <laughs> <laughs> Fax me an animation. <laughs> <laughs> frame by frame. Look, see, now the pins aren't there. Animated see? Animated. 60, sir. Yeah. 100. I have no idea how I made that work, but I just did. All right, so let me see. That was the the three unit generator control. So three unit. Three unit generator control. And what were the three units that we controlled? All right, so because three elements must be controlled, voltage regulators are typically incorporated in three unit con that controls controls I wasn't fast enough for this. I know. That's probably what happened there. See, I'm really just saving all kinds of time here, huh? Yeah. Control. We'll just edit that out. I'll look like a genius. No, nope, now it's doing some weird stuff here. I don't know. Table going here. Let's try that. No. All right, so we're going Control Z here until I'm happy. 
Yeah. One more. One more. There we go. All right. Yay. What is it? All right. What is the control? Hey, you asked for this. What is the control? Oh, now I just made a line there. Voltage. It controls voltage. What else does it control? This three units. Current. And lastly, reverse current. Reverse current. Reverse current cutout. All right, uh, let's see. We have the operation. So I'm going to talk next. Operation. Operation. Well, we got the voltage regulation unit. We can just write a few things about that. Voltage regulation. Uh, let's see, uses a vibrator. So it is, those vibrator points are what? Rapidly opening and closing. Well, is it wired in series or parallel with the field? Parallel. It's voltage, so it's always going to be? Parallel. parallel. Uh, well, actually not parallel with the field. It's actually in with series coil, with the right? field. So parallel with the armature. go back and look at that. So you can see that it is in parallel, but is in what? Well, actually, voltage coil. So that would be in parallel. Yeah. Parallel with the... Voltage coil? With, no, nah, with the armature. So it's wired in parallel with the armature, but off of that, this one here is in parallel with the armature, but in kind of series with the field. So parallel with the armature. Um, points are are uh, normally closed in C. Nope. Normally closed. All right, we did that. Let me see, voltage. We have the um, current limiter. Current limiter, and that is, um, let me see, series or parallel? Series. Series. Yep, in series. Armature and load. It's in between the two. And load. And points are normally closed. Let's see. These are all the things that are a vibrator type. Designed to reduce generator output if max current is reached. Excessive output will lead to overheating. Overheating causes the solder to fail and windings to come undone. But I've mentioned that before. It will break. You could just uh, works like a voltage regulator, which is wired in parallel. Um, let me see. How does it work? What is it doing when we hit the limit? It's opening the points. And Opens the points, and what what does that ultimately do? Directs the flow to a resistor. Okay, so a resistor that's going to the field coil. Field. field. Okay. Adds resistance. To field because that one is uh, in some ways it's a little different well all three of them are different obviously but it's measuring volt it's measuring current and then adjusting voltage. the voltage, voltage which is kind of weird now right, add resistance to field let me see yeah read it with that Decreased output reduces magnetic effect on points and they close. If output is near generator limit, the points vibrate. Points are designed to open. Oh, I didn't have this one. Points are designed to open at about 10% above rated capacity.
rated capacity. All right. Then we've got the RCCR. Reverse current cutout relay. Let's see, every system that has a generator that charges the battery and supplies the aircraft operating power, there must be an automatic means to disconnect the generator from the battery if the battery voltage is higher than the generator. Uh, what happens as a pilot if I need to disconnect the generator for some reason? Uh, you, yeah, you reach over a little switch that says generator and you go click and it's off or pull a breaker. Turn down your engine. Turn down your engine. <laughs> your engine. If battery voltage is less than generator and it is not disconnected, the battery change generator. One simple way to control this reverse current cutout. Uh, let me see. Voltage. voltage coil as many turns of fine wire parallel with the generator output. So we kind of covered all that. By the way, here is a three unit generator control. And you will notice that this one right here has. A lot of little tiny itty bitty wires. So that one makes that one. Voltage. Voltage. And this one right here in the middle has bigger wires. Not too many windings of really heavy wire. Current. Okay, and this one over here appears to have just a bunch of windings of heavy wire. Reverse current cutout. But how, isn't this supposed to have two? Yes. Yep. Well, if you look very carefully, you will see underneath. It's a very fine wire going through there and running through there. So it's the, that one's hidden. That one's hidden. Inside the other one? Yeah, it's hidden inside that one. And, yeah, okay, that's good. So large points, say we covered all that. Uh, according to these notes, points are adjusted to close. One thing about most of the books is they say stuff like when the generator is above battery voltage, then that will close, the reverse current cutout. Well, how does this know what battery voltage is? Well, on its initial close, it doesn't. There's nothing on here sensing battery voltage. So that's kind of a, a bad thing to say. It's misleading you into thinking that it's sensing battery voltage, it's like if you had a dead battery, it was only six volts, and so you hand propped it, and you got it running. As soon as the generator got to 6.2, that would close because it's more than the battery. But that's not true. That's false. That's false. It didn't happen that way because there's nothing on here sensing the battery voltage until it starts to run. So the uh, points will close. Does it just know what the difference is, essentially? Whoa, Whoa. what just happened? Damn. All the words just happened. <laughs> Notes are heavy. Today. I did hit Control Z. I think you wrote paste. I think it's like. Oh, are these the answers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what that was? Like AMP aircraft mechanic. AMP aircraft mechanic. Oh, that's um, <laughs> keywords that go into the YouTube stuff that I. Oh, you probably did Control V on it. Yeah, well, there's paper over everything, so I'm just I picked up the paper. I hit buttons. All right, reverse current cutout. Uh, points are adjusted. I'm sorry, could you all questions in writing, please? <laughs> Points are adjusted to close. Yeah, and fax it. Um, in triplicate. Well, so it's probably set at a certain voltage. At about 13.5 volts. Once it's strong enough that the battery, the generator is producing, it closes that. Well, it doesn't open until it has enough current or, or 26.6. That it forces it back over. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say though, like, what? Oh, never mind. I actually just figured it out. All right. So you're gonna you're gonna make that that coil in the reverse current cutout. You'll wind it. And you'll engineer it so that at about 13.5 volts it closes. When is it gonna open? When the when the battery voltage is higher than the output voltage. Now, when the battery voltage is higher, what does that mean? Well, what if the battery is just dead? It's a it's bricked and it's only got like two volts. Well, then your generator will work all the way down to then. 
because there's nothing to go backwards. So if your generator, so if your battery is say pretty dead, it's at six volts, and you pull the power back on the generator, and it goes 13, 10, eight, it's still gonna work. So it basically only senses like the difference. It's the like difference, it's be, it's yeah, it's gotta go backwards. So once it goes below six, then it would reverse because of the dead battery. So that'll be fun because you see everything really dim. All right, so that's the reverse current cutout. Everybody good with that? Yes. Okay. And in the past, I have gone into too much detail on this, so now I'm just going to mention it again. The equalizing circuit. All right, so that's it for, for three-unit regulator. Um, what else can I tell you? They've got the three little pins on it. Three little pins that say, what the hell is this one? D plus 61, D, F, and B. Um, I have no idea, man. Let's see. So we have the, oh, we have a, there we go. Yeah, that's not going to work. I would talk about that. should have a picture of this thing. Oh, good enough. Back up. There we go. So what we have been looking at was an A or B type? A. A type. A type. A type needs a a ground. What were we applying to this? Power. Power. So that makes it a. We're applying a positive field. So this is internally grounded, and the field needs a positive. 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 So we've been discussing a B type. B -type. Now the difference between an A type and a B type, if, if you said, oh, that's not fair, I want to learn all everything there is to know about, then I would just go, all right, fine. Then we'll cross that out and go F minus, and we'll just take this one and go like this, and then come over here and go like that. There we go. Now it's, there's the difference. So now that's F minus, and I got a positive from here. So see, there's a difference. Oh, so if positive is going into the regulator, it's a B type. Uh, no. Positive is Wait, going I, I, Yeah, yeah. This is like the, the, the tricks to like figuring them out. Like I get that. Uh, I was thinking that the ground was in the regulator, but I see like grounds coming out of the regulator. I guess that means that the regulator is positive. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. There would be a few little adjustments here because this is getting a positive over here, but um yeah i shouldn't have done that so that's how i change the generator and then you got to change out the regulator and just change where it's getting positives and negatives everything works exactly the same before i so made type that mess regulating how much power is going into the field versus a type it regulates how much power is leaving the field sure so we could say that in a b type which is what it is how much positive is getting to the armature in an A type, the armature starts positive over here and it's looking for a ground, so we're just going to add resistance going to ground. So instead of picking it up right there, I guess we could probably almost, eh, let me see, so just you, cut it right there and just make this, this loop of ground. I don't want to confuse you guys, but no, I, I can see how you could just if you change a few wires and it would be fine. Okay. I'm just wondering if you, if you didn't have that generator little diagram on the left hand side that just had the, the regulator well, then what would be the tell that would be a b type is it that, that okay what that would, would be the tell if i did if i didn't have the generator over here and i just looked at this what would be my tell sign uh, my tell sign would be right let me change the color right here so the points are picking up a positive right there so this is a positive wire going to the points and then the goes through the points back around and then over to here so I think what I could do if I change this to an F minus then this right here I could just loop around and go to ground follow oh yeah so you see like a ground coming. so that's just a ground right there and so now change pen colors let me see something like that um, this comes over here here like that and goes to positive right so everybody follow 
So now I got, I'll use a highlighter. So I got positive, 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 right? It's all, and what does it need? It needs a ground. It needs a ground. So could I find, so I can go through the, through the um, resistor, or I could come around here, whichever way I want to go, that's the same thing. I could go through the resistor, or I could go through the points, and it's going to come over here and found a ground. ground. So that would be your A type. Mm. And everything else would work the same, because the voltage coil is coming off of here, going through the voltage coil, coming down around here, and found its own ground. So it's operating just fine. So everything would work just the same. Uh, this coil is just going to do exactly the same. That's the way it's supposed to go. And that's going to come through here, and this is going to go down and find a ground, too. So everything is going to work just the same. So I just have to change those two little things. Is there a specific reason they make A type and B type if they function? Yeah, life would be a lot easier. If, and that's, and my understanding, when I say my understanding, now you know, it's like, uh, not 100% on this, but. I think the only one that's doing that is like Delco Remy, and maybe they were the only ones actually making um, generators. So, I want, and that was Chevy. And I read somewhere at one point, I think that's where Delco, you know, Delco is like Chevy, and Chrysler has, um, what does Chrysler have? Mopar. Mopar, yeah, and then Ford has Motocraft. Bo Moco. Okay. Motorcraft. Was it Motorcraft? Anyway. Or, or that. Yeah, I'm almost positive that Delco, Chevy was Delco because Delco was the person, the company that was making generators, the first generator manufacturer. And then Chevy bought them and then that became like their Delco thing. So, and so why would they make them? Maybe they were selling junk to, uh, junk. Oh, I was going to say crap, to uh, the damn MGs with their positive ground system. I don't know. <laughs> So I don't know. I have no idea why they would make both. Probably just so you'll blow up voltage regulators and uh, they could sell more by you putting them on the wrong thing and keeping people who don't know what they're doing from touching them. Good business. So the B type basically just controls how much power you get and the A type just controls how much ground you get? Yes, what he said. A type controls how much ground you get. B type controls how much positive you get. Which is a nice way of saying it because I've said it that way. All right. So now we brought ourselves right up into break time. <laughs>